Go ahead, Coach. All right. Well, uh, really excited about this week. Looking forward to the matchup with Boise State. Um, had a fun weekend and uh, got an extra day of rest. So our guys took, took advantage of that and we'll be ready to practice today, this afternoon. So uh, I'll keep it short and simple. Just take any questions you guys may have. Jared Lloyd, go ahead. Let's start with the obvious one. Kalani, what's the plan for quarterback this week? Yep. Uh, as far as right now, they're all still in, in, in uh, contention to play this Saturday. So uh, until I, we practice and get a look at them, um, no one's been taken off. Uh, so every, right now is today. Uh, everyone's still available to play. Do you have any other injury updates? Uh, nope. Nobody lost for the season, so nope. Guys are still banged up, and uh, guys are trying to come back, and so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But hard to predict from Monday to going into a Saturday game. But uh, imagine we're going to get more guys back this week. We're hoping. Mitch, go ahead. Yeah, Kalani. What what factors will go into deciding Jaron Hall or Baylor Romney's availability this week? how practice goes and, and, you know, where we feel is who's ever the most ready to give us a, a chance to win. That's the, that's that position quarterback and every other position that's going to be out there where guys that are still trying to come back from injury and things like that. So O-line quarterback, running back, doesn't matter. All the, all the positions go through the same protocol, which is practice. And if you can practice, then we'll gauge who, you know, who or, or what situation we're going to be in come game day and how often has as jaron since his injury against arizona state how often has he been able to take snaps and practice and, and get those first team reps still you want a number I, I don't know like not often enough to play so um not not enough for where i feel comfortable that he can go out and play in the game and where we feel like he's in a position to protect himself so yeah that that's probably the easiest way for me to say it and we're gonna, like I've always said this, we're gonna protect our players and so, sometimes even from themselves. Okay, let's go uh, Jake Hatch and then Jay Drew. Yeah, Kalani, in terms of Tyler's performance, going back and watching the film, were you struck anything different watching it a second time or a third time? Uh, really impressive, and um, just I, I was really pleased with everything from the other ten guys on the field as well. You know, I, I thought um, I like I like the play calls. I like the way our players. Uh, Utah State's one that the a defense that brings a lot of pressure, and I thought Tyler uh, ran the ball the right way. And it's stuff that we thought we saw all week that we we could get in practice, and so it's nice to see that uh, you know transition over to the game. I thought our scout team gave us a great look and some of the looks that we saw in the game. And uh, that's why it's really important that we get those guys that give us a great look and, and make things really hard for us because that, that's a lot like what the game went for us. And I was really impressed with the way Tyler and Lopini and, and everyone that had the ball in their hands, the way that they protected the ball. That's the thing that I'm always going to go to first. And what's your assessment of Boise State? Are they more of a similar Boise State that you've seen in the past or are they any different this year? Very similar. I mean, I think for us, it's the, the names we, we, we notice. I mean, it, it, this is a, a rivalry game for us where uh, it's something that, that we're familiar with, seeing all these guys on the field again and, and them returning. And I think they have, um, you know, Bachmeyer is a really good quarterback. He's efficient. He knows how to spread the ball out, and he has great targets to throw to. He can also run. He's, a, he's athletic. Um, you put that with all the receivers that they have, the tight ends, big targets. They have a, a core of running backs that can run the ball. Um, a number of them, I think like four guys that we looked at that, that, that are guys that are going to get carries. And then, um, you know, I think they have one of the, the most dynamic receivers in college football. I think Shakir is a really good player and um, well coached team. So I know that they've been, like a lot of other teams, been, been dealing with injuries and banged up guys. And so, um, you know, that. They're, they're a really tough opponent. I know we're going to get their best shot, 
I know their head coach, and he's going to get them ready. So uh, th we're looking forward to the matchup. But this is our, our entire focus is on um, us improving. And, and there's things that we saw from last week in the game that we could do better. Um, but I'm probably going to say that every week, you know what I mean? But I, I think a lot of the, the, the issues um, that, that could really help us out more is just us not being assignment sound enough. And that's in all three phases. So uh, I'd like to see where guys make plays on us, but we're in, always in the right spot with the right technique. That's from defense point of view and from offense. Same thing. They have to stop us. They have to stop all 11 guys in the field doing from doing their job. So, but uh, yeah, I just I'm really excited about this week. I'm excited about the matchup. I think they have a physical o line, big o line, and D line, and active backers and and, and DBs, and so. Be a good matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Jay. Well, Ani, now that you have a top ten ranking, five and zero, oh, haven't trailed in any games. How difficult will it be to keep this group grounded, or is that part of the culture that you've embedded that you don't have to worry about such matters? No, I mean it's one of those things where we need to stay hungry and you keep working. I mean, if, if everybody thought that we would be this, we would have been ranked number ten preseason you know so there's still a lot of more opportunities for us to shock people and um, there's still more for us to do so I think we've got to keep that edge um, we'll talk about it as a team we always talk about it. the guys are really focused I appreciate our coaches and our players being uh, ultra focused on 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 this week and um, you know so we we saw a lot of great things on 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 uh, Friday last Friday but Man, we saw a lot of opportunities that we missed out on, too. So I love that these guys are willing to learn and, and trying to get better. They're looking forward to today's practice. So it's going to be a lot of fun for us to get out there and try to find ways to get better and get guys some guys healthy, and we'll see what what happens when, when, when we get to Saturday. And I wanted to ask just about the series with Boise State. Obviously, in a couple of years, you'll be in the Big 12. Do you like this series? Would you like to see it continue? I know it's contracted to continue, but... Obviously, things will have to change. Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I don't know all the details of everything. That's a Tom Homo uh, question. Uh, but I, I, I really appreciated the consistency in playing Boise uh, every year. And I, I appreciate, uh, you know, their fan base and, and their program, just the way they do things. I, I think it's a, it's a first-class organization from the university to the athletics department to the football team. So, um, yeah, I... I I respect them a, a bunch, and like I said, we're looking forward to this matchup, but this is a team that we're used to playing against. Um, there's a lot of really good people on, on that roster that, that we know and our players are friends with, so it's a, it's a you know, we're geographically we're close enough where, where we know that there's some local people that are there, and like I said, we have players on our team that are good friends with, with players on their team, so it'll be a lot of fun. They're great coaching staff, and um, I think they're, they're a dangerous opponent. You know, we, we need to have all our focus on them and, and respect the game as much as possible. That means we need to make sure that we show up at our best this Saturday. Okay, next we'll have a question from Ron at the Idaho Statesman and then uh, Mitch Harper. Hey coach, so kind of building on that last question, um, over the, certainly over the last five or 10 years, you guys have been Boise State's most heated rival. As you look back at all those great games, how do you and your program kind of view that series? I know you have the in-state rivalry with Utah and Utah State, but is Boise State up there with those games? Yeah, definitely. I, I think it is. I mean, that's. I, I think it, it all depends on who you talk to, but from our, our point of view as a football program, we definitely do. We have a lot of respect for them, and, and uh, it's been helpful that we play them every year, you know. So I think uh, the, the connection that we have to, to people on that staff, I mean, Frank's up there. That's one. That's one of our our, our people that that we know. I've known him for a long time. Um, I've known their head coach for a long time, and that it, they have great fans. There's a lot of crossover, and um, you know, from, from people that I know from Idaho that are are that support Boise, and and um, so that we have a good connection. I, I think it's a it's a it's a nice uh, rivalry to have, and and uh, it's a fun one for us. And uh, you know, there's sometimes that that I wish we could have some of those games back, just like I know they wish they could. And so, uh, you know, it's good to have it as an annual thing. And uh, I'm glad that they stepped up and played us last year. That was awesome for them to do that and, uh, when they didn't have to, you know. And, and that, that was um, 
you know, I, I respect them so much for, for doing that. And, and I'm just really looking forward to, to the game this Saturday. And, and we get to have it in Pro Bowl. And it's going to be national TV. And it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for both programs to show what they have to, uh, you know, possible recruits that are out there and, and also fan bases that are out there in the world. Thanks, Coach. Alani, uh, A.E. Rod uh, called you uh, uh, the the uh, Ted Lasso of college football coaches uh, because of the culture you have in your program. Uh, how would you describe the, the culture of, of BYU football right now? I don't know. I don't know enough about Ted Lasso to make a comment on that one, so I don't, I'm not trying to promote other TV shows and everything like that. I'm just so focused on on uh, what we're doing as a team. So I, the, the culture, listen, it, it's 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 um, – I wish I could say it's something that's original and unique to, to what I know, but it's stuff that I grew up with from being, you know, I've had a lot of people that have really spent a lot of time um, and and their energy in helping me, mentor me and bring me along the way. And that's from family, friends, and, and coaches along the way. So I, I was able to thrive in an environment that Lavelle provided for us when I was a coach. And so I take all the, those things that Lavelle did and all the things I learned as a kid and as a coach and look at the stuff that I can combine with what um, Bronco did and what Croton did and, and what I learned from other coaches along the way like Kyle and others and, and other mentors that are out there like Andy Reid and, and other coaches that are available. I mean, uh, and then just try to put something together that, that I think could make it, make it work and focus on, on the players and focus on us trying to get better and trying to love and learn as much as we can. Okay, let's have uh, Sean Walker and then Jared Lloyd. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask you about the depth of your secondary because it's been obviously one of those areas we've talked about injuries uh, kind of back there with the corners and the safeties kind of moving around a bit. Uh, but it seems like they just keep stepping up. And I think another really good example this past weekend was Jacob Robinson kind of thrown into the fire against his own team and coming up with that big pick and, and whatnot. But how how deep is this secondary overall? And, and can you maybe uh, just illuminate us a little bit on, on how big Jacob's um, game was on Friday? Yeah, it was a great game. It would have been even better if he would have caught the first one that he dropped. So that, that would have been awesome. Uh, but... I was really pleased with some of the things that he did coverage-wise. And I'm going to tell you, uh, Coach Guilford has done an amazing job with, with, the, with the corners specifically and Ed Lamb with the safeties. So that, that's been a work in progress from the very beginning. And, and we've had to be in situations where we threw guys out there to play locked-up man coverage uh, against some great athletes, and, and they've had to learn the hard way. And, and now we have some depth, and um, I think I – think, um, it's a good sign for us. We, we talked about creating depth on the team, and it wasn't just O-line, D-line. It was all, all around. And, and so part of that is development, and part of that is, is our players having great work ethic and definitely the mentoring and the coaching that they receive from Gennaro and from Ed and others, um, and from Elisa and others on that staff, Preston and others. So, um, yeah, we, we, we put them out a little bit on the island a little bit this last game, and, and it worked out. And I don't know if we can do that all the time, but... It gives us some, it gives us some, um, you know, some flexibility. We can be versa versatile with our play, with our play call sheet. Jared, go ahead. Kalani, you talked about physicality, and you know some of the fun plays from last week. We're watching some of those receivers make some big blocks. How important has it been to develop that physical mindset across the board? Because it seems like offense, defense, special teams, like that's that's what you want from your guys and that's what you're getting and that's what's contributed to a lot of the success. Yeah, I, I think the, the physical and tough part of the game comes down to what you're willing to do, it comes down to accountability. Uh, a lot of people think that it's just about being strong and being tough in those other ways, but it's, it's, it's just being accountable and be willing to do your part, you know, so uh, guys are willing to do their jobs. I mean, we've had great blocks that's that's the difference between a, a good run and, and a great run is is someone requiring uh, that you you ask to do their job and then do it um, an amazing job at it and so we ask our players to do 111th and great things will happen and that's proof of it right there you know and, and 
and just really grateful that I have young men that are willing to work hard and willing to sacrifice a lot of things and, and hold each other accountable. And, um, you know, when you do things like that, it, I think I think you can have a lot of success. But it, it comes down to the, who those young men are and being, being, having the courage to be um, the, the, the young men that their mom and dads want them to be here at BYU. And so uh, I, I get I get to benefit a lot from 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 those young men being raised up the right way. The other thing I was curious about, um, we've talked before about the idea of style points, how as an independent style can make a difference to some people, but you always talk about respecting the game. Do you feel like just that karma element and that respect for the game does help the team just respecting, you know, the college football in general? I think it's a big part of it. I, I don't know. I, I can't tell what other coaches should do and how fans should act, but I, I like having uh, fans around and I love, um, you know, being able to connect and compete against uh, our opponents. So I, I don't know how everybody else wants to do it, but um, we could have got, as you said, more style points last year. But instead, we chose to work some players into reps, and this year we're benefiting from those guys getting the development. And so, if you talk about development, it, it's not just uh, what they do in the weight room, how much stronger and faster they get. It's giving them the trust to get out there and play in games and and rotate and and you know I've had people tell me well you guys rotate too much how come no one's saying that anymore you know what I mean now they're talking about our depth is, is really good but that's the thing is we've we've had we've been working on this for a while now but it's a commitment that we're making to to our players and to our I mean Zach Wilson didn't complain at all last year when we took him out of the games he understood what what, what our culture is and what we're trying to accomplish and that's giving Baylor and, and others a, a chance to get out there on the field you know and so uh, same thing with Tyler and others. It's not about the stats. It's about what's right in the game. And, and that means these guys that have worked extremely hard when they have an opportunity to play, let's give them a chance to do it. Okay, and last question from Jake. Kalani, kind of building a little bit off that a new wrinkle we've seen in your defense is Chaz Ayu and or Morgan Piper kind of manning that middle linebacker role and kind of that hybrid defense you've put out over the last two weeks. Is that something you've had – in the pipeline for a while now, or is that something you guys did in response to the teams you've played recently? A little bit of both. I, th I think um, the, the hardest part was losing Keenan Peely. That, that that was very difficult for our defense, and because he's a captain, you know, and he's a leader, but uh, he was playing so well, man. He, he was playing great football, and so the, to lose him was harsh for our, our team. But we had to reload and figure out a, a way to put the best 11 on the field. And it just so happens that we have a lot of versatile players that can play a lot of different positions and um, that, that are physical and strong enough to play in, in the box as a linebacker but have the speed to go out and cover people in the slot and, and, and play in the deep post. Um, and so we have those type of athletes like, like Chaz and like um, Morgan and others that can do it. And so... Yeah, we're, if we have those athletes, we, we love recruiting athletes and what people might call hybrids and putting them in a lot of different places. That's why we have so many different um, positions listed on our depth chart. And, and people are always wondering what that is because we have a bunch of guys that can play a lot of different positions. And uh, when you're going against a team that does a lot of pro style, it's different than when you're going against a team that does a lot of spread formations. And, and it just so happens that Boise does it all. So... Uh, we, you know, we have to have all our guys ready to roll and, and all our sub packages ready to go as well. So uh, going against Utah State last week, that was difficult because they were so fast, high pace. And I thought uh, uh, Elisa Tuyaki did a great job of getting the defense ready. He and, and Ed and, and Gennaro and, and, and Clune and, and uh, Preston had a great game plan. And I'm um, just glad our guys, you know, got, got the win and, and played really hard and played really assignment sound football. Uh, but we can always improve and get better. One more quick question for you. I just wanted to get your assessment of Connor Pay as well as Campbell Barrington getting their first starts of the season along that offensive line. Yeah, Connor started for us before at, at guard earlier this year. He and Joe Tukwafu were uh, um, sharing reps at right guard. And then um, with James not being able to go, we know that we can move Connor to center. So he played uh, – I think he did that in, in – you know, he's played a lot in the bowl game last year, and we knew that he was something special just because he could play all five positions. Not a lot of linemen can do that. And so having Connor step up and do that was, was huge for us. And 
um, you know, Campbell stepped up and he played against South Florida, came in and filled in for Harris when Harris got hurt and then got his first start and did an amazing job. So, I, I mean, you know, we like our depth and I, I just, I mean, we need to get guys healthy though. You know, I, I think the depth has been tested quite enough now. So it's time to get, I need to start saying we like our guys getting healthier so we can get them all back for the Saturday. But really happy with the guys that stepped in and, and, and made plays. Coach, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Be safe.